Hey everyone, it's Terry with Terry's Tidbits and the Des Moines Area Community College. In this week's study group, we visited about the sales and marketing automation processes. We covered a variety of different topics all related to that. Hopefully these are the items that will be on the exam. Um, but uh, do study, take, take time to study for these exams. They are well worth your effort to do so. And I hope that these videos are helpful for you. Let's jump in and, and uh, join the group. Hey everyone, it's Terry with Terry's Tidbits. I am so glad you're here. All right, so we are um, talking about the sales and marketing applications today. That ends, ends up being 12% of our exam. So it is a key piece of the exam. Um, we're covering that entire topic uh, today. So we have sales processes, sales productivity features, and lead automation tools and campaign management. And Reggie, you kick us off today, followed by Debbie, and then Spencer, you get to wrap us up. So as soon as you're ready, go ahead and share what, you're, what you have for us. I don't think I'll ever be ready, but we'll make a stab at it. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right so um can you see that all right and hear me okay yeah it looks good okay so i didn't really know how to approach this because we um spent a bit of time on the last session going over sales processes and uh did a really good job of it so I just kind of uh, try to use maybe a different example of um, how we would use sales processes and uh, maybe a business that I'm familiar with or uh, just a, a different uh, different method of using sales processes. So the business that um, example that I want to use is uh, company ABC has multiple departments um, set up for sales and accounts. Um, set up for sales with accounts that buy from all departments. Uh, management wants to track sales um, by department at account level, but does not want leads uh, slash opportunities shared between departments. This will help other teams and management determine what departments are effective. Uh, it can also help with um, determining how effective our marketing departments are. Um, products may have uh, multiple different sales cycles and uh, different methods of marketing. Like um, for example, in company ABC, I kind of used the company profile would be a, uh, a rental slash equipment sales, construction sales business where you would have um, seasonal, um, seasonal products um, and then rentals and then consumables that an account may use. And then um, like new equipment sales like capital expenditure. And so, um, the processes for each of them may be different. There may be, uh, you know, there may be leads that are established. And then once the account's established, um, your processes are going to require different stages and automation, um, per, um, that, you know, per each process. And we want the ability to customize it between, um, profiles so that, uh, the rental department may not necessarily see that this guy is getting a quote on a new uh, piece of machinery. So they, um, that's when we can establish what sales process is related to which record type. So the next slide is just a, um, how we would go about um, simply creating a sales process. Obviously go to setup, um, click on the gear icon, click on setup. In the quick find box, type in sales processes. And then if there are no sales processes, you can click new. If there are currently sales processes that you want to modify, you can obviously edit and delete them. Um, and then type in the desired name of your sales process. I think uh, last week um, we went over how uh, a naming convention. Um, so um, we may place the company name in front of this as you know ABC new equipment sales and ABC rental sales so that they're all aligned and easy to find. 
Um, obviously the next uh, page that it takes you to is um, these values here that you can select um, and add or remove from your selected and available values. Um, these can also be customized. And then um, your sales process is obviously related to record type and opportunity stages. So uh, the examples that are in uh, the sandbox uh, that we have access to are just generic examples and uh, they can be modified um, uh, per unique uh, profile requirement and percentages can also be modified, which I'll show you in the next slide. Uh, examples would, um, like an over-the-counter rental cell may not need a follow-up uh, and may be considered closed, you know, may, may be immediately considered closed in one. Um, so the stage, the stages for that type of sale might not be the same stages that are required for like a new equipment sale. Um, obviously our opportunities can come in at multiple levels as well and from different users in different departments. Um, and with the ability to select different uh, record types at that point, um, we can um, do automations uh, behind the scenes uh, to escalate and de-escalate where these opportunities go. Um, obviously, um, as, as we move through a, um, sales process, there's going to be a, a path that uh, that takes, um, which is considered a stage. And um, as we move through uh, those stages, they're displayed on a path in the object. Um, every record type uh, on opportunities requires a sales process and record types uh, can be assigned to profiles. Um, Opportunity stages can be set up to different uh, percentages depending on how uh, the sales process is set for your unique uh, company values. And that's shown here in opportunity stages. Um, I guess I, I uh, went through uh, in the sandbox and just created um, multiple different uh, sales processes and then um, assigned uh, record types to those sales processes. Um, Terry, can you help me out on anything that we're missing or need to so, add? So you set up the sales process. Um, you, then, yeah. you then set up record types and assigned a sales process to the record type. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and that, they're on that page there, the screenshot that you've got as you create stages, you're also able to assign those stages specific directly to a sales process from that view as well. So there's a couple of different ways you can get, get at this. Um, so you can, you can assign your sales process from the stages opportunity stage screen. You could also go directly into your sales process and assign your stages from, from kind of that main sales process screen as well. Okay. Um, there, obviously, um, there are mul multiple different uses uh, for these sales processes. We had the example last week where we had basically territories divided north and south. Um, my my main questions were how to relate. Can can multiple um, stages uh, in a path, say that say that you have an opportunity that's being used by multiple departments. Can the stages? Um, can you remove a stage from from an object that is uh, on a path? Say that uh, say that we go to one that's closed in in one one, and then I want a department to follow back up in a certain amount of time. Can it? Can we do an automation that'll bring it back onto a path or does that create a new opportunity at that point? Um, it probably depends on your situation, but um, if you, I would probably just create a task 
for the user to follow up um, to that opportunity. And then if they, if there is a need for a new opportunity, let them create that opportunity or maybe make a, have a simple automation that allows them to create the opportunity um, quickly. But I don't know that I'd probably create an opportunity automatically without a phone call first, but um, unless it's something like consumables, um, let's say you're selling a piece of equipment, you sell that, that's, that could be a, you know, a full um, sales process where you have your negotiation, you have all your calls and all of that stuff happening that you could have a, a sales process that has all of those different stages or milestones um, to that sales process or sales cycle. Um, once they buy that equipment, it's closed one, you, maybe, you know, that every quarter, Hey, they're going to have to buy more consumables. And it's almost like that's, it's not a negotiation process. It's going to be more of a, uh, Hey, Robbie, I need more consumables. Can you send them over? (laughs) You know, (laughs) and that's, that's like a, a, you know, you, you have the, you have your opportunity and it's almost always either closed one, closed lost. It doesn't really have a whole lot of stages in between. Uh, it's more of a one and done type deal or, and, and that would be a different sales process for those types of cells. So you might, it would have a different record type for consumables. Um, um, if another example um, would be more like an over uh, over the counter type, and I think you mentioned that Reggie, where um, the process is is basically another one and done type deal. An over the counter cell wouldn't have a full life cycle of that cell; it's a closed one done. Um, you may have like the example I think last week, where you have different territories, different managers want to track their cells with different stages. I would try to avoid that, but that would be another example where you could use multiple sales processes in that scenario. Um, one that, that you might would run into would be if, it, let's say I'm a distributor, I, I, I'm a manufacturer and I do direct sales and I have distributors that do sales for me. Those could be different sales processes because it's it's a different different game when I, a, um, your ability to track all of the, um, details related to a distributor doing the sell would be different than if you're doing the sell yourself, because you may not have visibility to all of the, the things when a distributor is engaged. So yeah, th- there's a lot of reasons for sales processes. And I, th- I think your big key, t- key takeaways there is when would you use it? Um, you probably will get questions on the exam, I would think, uh, along that line. You'll get a scenario and it'll be, uh, you'll have to answer, how would you set this up? And it, it could be that you'd have to do a sales process for something like that. So sales processes, they manage your stages. Um, your record types are connected to them. Um and I think those are those are kind of the big the big issues I think they're on your sales process. Any questions on those? Is a certain sales process always related to the same record type? A sales process is can be related to different record types, but a record type is always only connected to a single sales process. Hopefully that makes sense. Record type has has one sales process that's that's associated to it, but I could have multiple record types connected to the same sales process. Any other questions? I think for the most part, it's a fairly simple concept. It's it's just a matter of understanding the basics of it and how and when you would apply it. And then you should be pretty good. So nice job, Reg. Appreciate that. Debbie, in your comfy chair, you are up next. You almost look like you're frozen in your image, but we hear your voice. So that's good. There you go. 
Let me try to share. And you have the sales productivity features. So given a scenario, apply the appropriate sales productivity features using opportunity tools. For example, dashboard lead scoring, Einstein uh, opportunity scoring, and homepage assistant are some examples. That's like throwing the kitchen sink at it and say, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, are you able to see this at all? I'm um, not yet. Okay. When you share on Zoom, you'll get the little window that tells you which one, and then you have to hit the share button on that screen. I always forget the share button on that second screen. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there okay. it is. Yep, yep we are. Uh, we, we see your slide deck. Okay, great. Um, okay, so a lot of it I kind of went through and tried to learn it and explain it, so bear with me here. Um, so for the sales productivity features, um, um, you have different opportunity tools that you can use. Um, you've got dashboards that you can use, lead scoring, Einstein opportunity scoring and your homepage assistance are some examples of the tools you can use. And, um, you know, a lot of times as an administrator, um, you're gonna be um, asked a lot of questions. And in those questions, um, you're gonna realize, oh, I need to do a report. So. Um, you kind of have to decipher that. And, um, you know, some of the questions could be what products are my top sellers? Who are my highest value prospects? Which marketing campaigns have been the most successful? How satisfied are my customers? And out of that, um, you have to think about um, the type of report that you're going to need. And you want to ask a lot of follow up questions write requirements out of that, map those requirements to report criteria. And then, um, so you take one scenario, what is my top seller? And some of the follow-up questions can be, um, what makes a top a product a top seller, revenue or quantity? Do you want to see the results grouped by product family? What is your date range? And if we, Stop selling a product, should it show a hey, Debbie, we don't hear you now. All of a sudden, you just cut out. Looks like we still see your slides, though. Don't know if you can hear us. I hope you can. Um, a lot there of you are. you are back. Sorry, oh, Debbie, you were you disappeared there for your voice did anyway for a moment. Oh, so okay. If you want to start this slide over, that's probably about where we lost you. Okay. Um, some tips about um, asking, um, you know, trying to figure out how to um, make a report is asking the follow up questions. So, as a. Oh, no. I assume you guys are not hearing her as well. Yeah, we lost it. Cut out. Okay. All right. All right. So well, hopefully she comes back where I she can hear us Deb. again. Hey Deb. Yeah. Do you, you have me? um Debbie? Yeah. You, are you on a headset or anything? No. No, you you're cutting out on us still um oh, periodically. Gosh. So you're you're there and then all of a sudden it's like mid sentence it stops and then you we give it give you a little bit of time, you come back. Okay. Is this better? We'll, we'll try. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sorry. Um, so I have one scenario of what are my criteria and then you make a report type and um, you go through the report format grouping and out of making a report, then you can do a dashboard. Um, so then a dashboard, um, let's see, whoops. Um, let me go back here. I think I skipped one. Um, I, once you make a report, you can create a dashboard as one of the productivity features. Um, and every dashboard is from a single source report. So creating that 
report and she's gone <laughs> All right, that may, may be problematic here. So when um, there, she's back. Oh, can you hear me? Yep, you're back. Okay. <laughs> um, let's see. Did you hear about um, the report no. turning into? Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, let me go back. So out of the reports, um you want to create the dashboards. And so the reason I went through making a report and asking all those questions is because every dashboard is from a single source report. And then you also store the dashboards in a folder, just like you do the reports. And then of course, privacy can be determined by all your settings. And another productivity feature is um, lead scoring. And so um, Einstein helps a lot with lead scoring. And um, here um, you can see that they've... They each have their score. <laughs> I'll try, try to see if I can predict what she's saying. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Let's see. All right, you're back again. Oh, okay. Sorry, it's going in and out. I'm on my laptop and I didn't think I'd have these issues. No, it's, not, it's fine. Um, and then you have um, Einstein opportunity scoring. And so Einstein can do a lot for you without any extra cost. Um, it's built in. So you don't have to pay a lot of money for big data, making apps. Um, so a lot of it comes with your, your um, um, Salesforce. And then you have features for the homepage assistant and um, you can, um, Sorry, guys. For homepage assistant, that will help us as features. So you cut out on the homepage piece. Can you just run through that one one more time, Deb? Well, oh, maybe we lost her again already. All right. Um, okay, sorry. All right, Deb, you're back again. On the homepage assistant, can you just kind of repeat your talking points there real quick? You don't need to share the deck again, but. Yeah, um, so they've done some updates where leads are assigned to you today. It can show that. It can show your opportunities with overdue tasks, opportunity. Um, yep, and she's gone again. Essentially, it must be a connection issue because her video does the same thing, it looks like. All right. Um, so I think the key takeaways on that was yes, is the... Sorry, you're back again. We lost you even that way. Um, so, how, um, Deb, how much... It, was that basically the content that you had? I think maybe... Um, so what I would, I would suggest you, um, that you'll want to spend some time looking at is just a variety of some of these different types of things that could be helpful from an opportunity or sales process standpoint. It could be anything from automations, uh, things that you can do to simplify sales, make their job easier, help them identify records that may be of importance to them. I liked the I like the example Deb had there with the um what's my top selling seller product. That's a that's a good one. Um being able to um create reports like that is is super helpful. 
any what you'll find, and, and some of you probably know this better than I do, um, but if you work with salespeople, they really don't like to be, um, they really don't like to be secretaries. Uh, and so if you're, if they're having to go into an opportunity and key in a ton of information, they're, they're not likely going to do that. You're, you're going to need to make the, make your processes for them as simple as you can. They're, they're very busy people. Um, and so leveraging as much automation as you can for them. Leveraging intelligence type items like like Einstein um, prediction builder, some of those types of AI things. Some of those do have extra costs, but you're going to want to be at least aware of your Einstein capabilities and how that can be helpful um, for them. And then, um, yeah, the home assistant I think is a nice tool. Uh, that lives on your homepage that can be um, that just lets them know, hey, you've got things like neglected opportunities um, or you've got opportunities without activity associated with them. Another way you could you could help them with that is teach them how to use the Kanban view to view my opportunities in in more of that Kanban type style that that particular view will put a little um, yellow uh, triangle information icon on the card that says, hey, this guy doesn't have any activities associated with it. That's another simple productivity option that's available. So those are all all things that just make the life of your salesperson much simpler um, is really what, what this whole section is about. Any questions, thoughts on any of that? Any of those tools that you have uh, questions on you you're not familiar with. You good, Ashley? I am good so far. Good. All right. Brock, you doing all right? I am doing well. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Very good. So Spencer, you want to take us, I think you've got the lead side of the house, right? And a bit of campaigns. Leads and campaigns. Awesome. Uh, see my screen? Yep. Looks good. Okay. Leads and we hear you, <laughs> which is a bonus. <laughs> <All right. laughs> okay, so we'll be going over leads and campaigns real quickly. Um, so, you know, very quickly, a lead is just a person who might be interested in your product and service. Um, after the lead has been matured, they'll typically be converted into an account and alongside that. Um, a contact will be created, and if it's a really good lead, you can optionally create an opportunity. Um, there are a lot of ways to add leads into your organization. One way is to manually create the leads to the leads homepage. And so if we go over to the leads page, uh, there's this new button, very standard entry form. Um, one thing to note, and that I'll cover here soon, is assign using active assignment rules. And that's just a way to make sure that the right person gets the lead based off of some criteria for the lead. Um, you can also import a bunch of leads. And so back on that same page, um, over here, you can click on the import button and you'll be able to import a large amount of leads at once. And so, so just look who while you're here last week i think we were talking about um importing users, um, and email users and a statement was made questioning how how many how many records can be added using the import wizard uh, it is the i think the thought was it was only ten thousand. it is fifty thousand. so just be aware of that number if you pick that up last week and you're thinking oh it's ten thousand. it's like nope it is fifty thousand. So just be aware of side, side toll um, rabbit trail, but just wanted to correct that from last week. Um, now I'm not going to get too much into this tool, but again, there's also this drop down to use uh, assignment rules. And so I'll go over that in a few slides. And that's again, just a way to make sure that you can route leads to the right uh, person to own that lead. Um, and then there's also something called web to lead. I'll go over that real quickly, but that's just a way to create a form through Salesforce that you can embed within your website. 
Um, and so you'll just say, hey, I want to capture these fields. It'll spit out some HTML and you can embed that within your website. And so if you want to use web to leads, uh, if you go to setup, um, search web to lead, that'll come up and you can go into that real quickly create web to lead form. And so you'll be able to select any of the fields you want to capture, including some custom fields. Um, you know, I don't really care about company, but I do care about phones. I'll bring that over and I want to bring it all the way up. And then you'll specify a return URL. And so after they hit the submit button, they'll be redirected to a new page. And so this page will typically be you know, like a thank you page for submitting this form. Someone will be in contact with you shortly, something like that. So. Uh, I'll just put a temp one in there. And then you can also include a CAPTCHA to make sure that like bots aren't filling out your form and sending you fake lead data. But you click generate and it'll spit out some really simple HTML that you can embed within your website for you. Um, and this is what a lot of times you'll put out like the bottom of your website and you'll be like, hey, like this was really cool. I would like to get in contact with you and let them fill it out. Um, and so then after they hit submit, the lead will be uh, generated in your organization. And so that's what it'll look like. Uh, it doesn't come with any styling, but your website should already have CSS. So it'll get styled for you. That's really cool, but you still want to make sure that the lead goes to the right person um, to own it. And we can do that using assignment rules. And assignment rules are just specifying some type of criteria of you know around the lead to help route who owns that lead and so back onto the setup page um, if you search assignment rules lead assignment rules will come up um, and you can have a few but if you click create or new you can create a new one the mac demo and we'll set this as active. You can only have one lead assignment rule set active at once. So we'll go through this one um, and we'll need to add some rule entries. And so, you know, let's imagine a scenario in which we operate in two states, um, two of our users, or we have two main users who manage the leads. One operates in Iowa, the other one operates in like Nebraska. Um, and so we wanna make sure that any leads that belong to Nebraska go to the right agent and same with Iowa. Um, so we'll just set rule order one or sort order here one. And I'll go over that shortly. Um, and you can do just the basic criteria. And so, you know, if X equals Y type things, very simple logical operators, or you can do a formula field that evaluates to true. Um, for this one, we'll just do a really simple criteria match. And so we'll say if, uh, if I can find the state, the state provenance equals to uh, Iowa, we want to automatically assign it to uh, Spencer Bailey. You can additionally attach email templates for this, but um, we'll hit save and new. And then that covers any leads that come in through Iowa, they'll automatically be assigned to the user Spencer Bailey. Um, create another rule and do the exact same thing, but this time, Nebraska. And we'll assign these leads to a different user uh, and save. Oops. Excite real quick, save. And so we have two rule sets now, and these are executed in order. And so rule number one will execute before rule number two, and rule number two will execute before rule number three, and so on. And that's really important to know because uh, Salesforce will stop the moment one of these criteria is met. And so if a lead comes in and it's from Iowa, it will stop right here. It'll assign it to Spencer Bailey, and it will never look at any other rules. Um, and so that's really important to remember in case um, how you structure your order of rules to make sure you're not assigning leads to the wrong person uh, 
because of the order and structure of your rules. Um, if it goes through all of the rules and it cannot find anyone, there's a default lead owner that it will get um, assigned to. Or if you're doing such as the import tool, I believe it defaults to the admin importing all the leads. And so that's also important to keep in mind. If, um, before you go back, one more thing on the lead assignment that I want, want uh, you to cover. Um, go ahead and add a new rule. And we can assign these rules to users or we can assign them to, I believe it's queues correctly. Yeah, yep. queue. So be aware that that can be assigned to a queue. Queue is just simply a grouping of people. Mm -hmm. um, and so that is that is also an option. Um, and then for leads, um, you know, we'll go over back to the lead page. Um, and so once a lead has kind of matured, it's gone through all of the processes we want to go through with it, we can convert it into uh, an account and a contact. And so at that point, we're handed off to the sales team typically, um, but we'll log a call here real quick. Test save. Um, mark that as convert status. So you can select convert status or there's a button up here for converting uh, leads. And so we can either create a new one or try to match it or choose an existing one for it. Um, and then optionally, if we think it's a really good lead that's likely to result in a sale, we can create an opportunity. Or if not, we can check the checkbox down here. Uh, click convert. And it has been created. And if we go into any of these, uh, you know, it keeps a lot of that information we've already logged in the activity to make sure nothing gets lost. Um, and then campaigns. Campaigns are just a specific or can specific I stop you for a moment yeah. again? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> You're doing awesome. I love, I love it. You're hitting so many good details to be aware of. And I, that's awesome. Uh, one one other piece though that I would um, be familiar with is is your field mapping between leads and accounts and contacts. Um, you can you can only map uh, your custom fields. So if you wouldn't be able to map a a, a standard field, so be just be be aware of that process. The other one you might jump over into setup. Uh, real quick and just go to lead settings. You're going to want to be familiar with the items on this page. You kind of covered a bit of this by your default lead owner um, is is managed within your lead settings. But there's a handful of other ones just to just be aware of the items that are on this page uh, so that you if you get asked a question, you're going to be able to at least know, hey, these are some op options. So like hide the opportunity selection when you convert a lead. You know, so you don't want them to create an opportunity. So you do have the ability to hide that section. Um, so just different different items there. Just be aware of those as well on your lead. Awesome. Um, and then campaigns. Uh, so campaigns are just specific marketing activities or a series of marketing activities to help promote a product or service or even try to promote your brand recognition to make you more well-known. And they're really useful just for tracking metrics. And so, you know, if you want to track your return on investment, you can set like how much the campaign or money is going into the campaign and seeing how much that ultimately brings back by tracking um, how individual leads are influenced by marketing by seeing, you know, did a lead who got this you know, email eventually convert into a sale. Um, you can also do things like reports off of them. Uh, and then a campaign member is just any leads or accounts that are associated with the campaign. And so if you want to create a new campaign, go over to the campaign's homepage and you can click new and create one. Test um, and set as active and you can just choose all the things you need for it. And so let's say you want it to be uh, email one um, and you know, the time range you want it to go for. So we want this one to go for a year. 
and you can input like how much money you want to put in and how much you want to get back just to like set these goals and understand the resources being allocated for this campaign and how much you're ultimately getting back to understand how uh, leads are influenced by your campaigns. Uh, click save. I'll go back real quickly. You can even do nested campaign or like a uh, hierarchy of campaigns. And so go over to one I've already done. Uh, there's a campaign hierarchy. And so you can have multiple campaigns with the campaign. And this can be five levels deep, I believe. Um, and then all of the metrics within these campaigns will be rolled up to the parent campaign. And so if we want to add a child campaign, uh, when you are creating a new one, there's a field called parent campaign and you can just search which ones you want. Uh, and so we'll just go through that one, save, and that will show up. Um, and if you would like to add a lead to this campaign, there's a few ways to do that. There's the add leads to uh, the campaigns on the campaign page. Or you, I don't have any for it here. Um, alternatively, also on the leads homepage, you can uh, click add to campaign. And that's really all I had for campaigns. Yeah, very nice. Um, couple things there on the return the return on your the investment yeah. how is that tracked uh i'm not sure okay no it's all right so on your opportunities the, there is a primary campaign source and so when an opportunity is created you've got the ability to connect that to a campaign and that's where you will start to see how that return on your investment comes in so your close one opportunity as well be connected there. Um, love the fact that you hit the hierarchy. That's important to know. It's also important to know that that's going to roll up your dollars. Uh, so that was that was very good. Um, there is also an, a concept called campaign campaign influence. So let's say that um, I'm I'm a contact, and you have me set up as a maybe you did a campaign that's a trade show and I happen to go to that trade show. And so I'm on that list of, of on that campaign, I decide to give you guys a call and, and purchase something from you. You don't necessarily, I don't, I don't tell you, Hey, that I was at that conference or, and that's the reason I'm, I'm uh, buying from you. So you don't really have a primary campaign, but you do know, that I was at that conference because I'm you got a list of everybody that attended that conference. My name was on it. And so that that gives you the ability to define some rules, campaign influence, where it's likely the fact that I learned about you or you learned about me uh, through that conference. You can't directly associate it, but indirectly it's tied. And so that's your campaign influence. And you've got settings that you can use to control um, which campaigns have that and it's really kind of an internal debate as to who, who which campaigns what are the rules related to those campaigns uh, that allow you to capture that influence that also can kind of play into some of your campaign processes there so that was awesome you covered a lot of the good details i think in there spencer that that people are going to want to know so um that's very nicely done um, what types of campaign members can be associated? What types of records? Uh, I don't know. Throwing that out. What kind of what kind of records can be associated as a campaign member? Leads and contacts. Leads and contacts. What about accounts? No. Okay, it's kind of a trick question. But you do have now the ability to associate accounts as campaign members. Really? So that is a, a feature that can be enabled um, through your oh. setup. So just be, be aware of that if you run into that. that it's kind of a trick question because for years we're used to it just being people. And now it can be accounts as well. 
Okay, good. Um, trying to think if there's anything else there. Um, I, I typically, uh, I, I would encourage you not to think of campaigns specifically as a marketing tool. It's really just a list of people. Um, Robbie, you probably heard me say this multiple times to you. A campaign is just a list. Yep. And um, and I, I I complain all the time. I wish Salesforce would would stop calling it a campaign because a campaign is a much broader marketing event than than what what uh, these are in Salesforce. They're just simply a listing of people, a grouping of people, um, or accounts. Um, so anytime you're looking to create some type of a group or list of people, campaigns is the way to do it. If you're integrating with email marketing solutions like Marketing Cloud, HubSpot, any any of your you know key tools that are out there, this is probably going to be on the exam. But most of the time, they're going to work with the campaign object in Salesforce. Um, Spencer's Spencer's uh, presentation is a lot of in, in organizations that have marketing, large marketing teams or even small marketing teams, those teams primarily are going to focus on leads and campaigns. It's kind of almost if you, you not kind of almost segment Salesforce into this is marketing's realm <laughs> and that's leads and campaigns. And then you have accounts, contacts, opportunities, that's your salespeople's area. Um, that's not always the case, but it, it's kind of a an easy way to kind of think of the differences between the different sections of within Salesforce. So, uh, marketing lead, leads and campaigns, sales accounts, contacts, and opportunities, and then your customer service is your cases. Um, so, kind of your three three legs of a stool there. 